Lloyd Vehicle Consulting stickers, t-shirts and mugs are available by clicking the link to the Google form in the video description below. Good morning. Today is the 20th of May and this is the 2023 Retro Rides Weekender here at uh, Goodwood in Sussex. This is part one of the slightly shambolic shuffle. Goodness knows how many of these parts we're going to be doing over the course of the weekend. Probably 12, probably more. Who knows? There are a couple of things that uh, we need to say before we start, viewers. Uh, one is that we don't talk about diesels on this channel because the Mayor of London and his friends all around the country have introduced ultra low emission and clean air zones and so therefore we must not talk about them. Secondly, if I fall over, if I get things wrong, um, if I get interrupted by announcements, music and anything else, then I apologise. It's just the way that it goes on this channel. We'll start in the corner where they've directed me to park. Um, I was a little bit delayed in getting here. The traffic on the way in was, was pretty bad, uh, but it doesn't matter. The variety of stuff here that I've seen so far is actually really, really good. I think they are trying to prevent uh, the cars that are registered after 2000 getting into the display areas. We might see one or two, I don't know. Start off with this NA. Unos Roadster, 1995-1996, play Japanese import, straight away we can tell that from the number plate aperture here. This one's a manual, I have driven an automatic one of these, I drove it uh, quite a number of years ago now. And uh, it was a lot of fun, although it didn't like my camera mount, it shook it completely off the windscreen. Um, so there we go. Next to it, I suppose we'll see quite a few of these uh, Unos's, MX-5s, things like that as well. Maybe some 205s. This is not a 205 GTI, this is a GT. Um, 1989-1990 plate. I suspect just before they changed the rear lights of these very slightly. It's in nice condition though. I, I actually quite like the uh, look of these wheels. I, I'm, I'm usually somebody who loves standard cars. But we'll see a lot of modified cars today. And uh, it is just my opinion, it, you don't have to agree with me and what I think, um, you know, everything to do with modifications, someone's taste, isn't it? Late Renault 5 here, this is one of the ones that would have been built in Slovenia, 1994-1995 registration on this one. This probably uh, would have been a Campus Prima. Uh, this smaller on the back is not original. By this stage, they were being sold um, at very, very low prices in this country because we didn't have the Twingo, which most other European markets got. I've actually driven one of these on the channel again quite a long time ago. It was a white one and uh, a sort of fun. I got this, uh, this Volvo back from Mr. Colmerish Mechanic yesterday, and uh, here it is. It's his first show appearance. And yes, those wheel trims are totally knackered. We are going to actually get some Volvo 480 alloy wheels for this. Um, just because <laughs> you could try to repaint them, but there's really not much point. It'll be easier to get those uh, wheels on and off if they're Valo wheels, and it will be better handling and all sorts of stuff, and it needs some new tyres in a few months anyway, so that's what we'll do. But uh, yeah, so a nice shady place for today. Another car of the era, Volkswagen Golf Mark II Driver, with some BBS wheels on it. So. Below the, G the GTI, um, not the big bumper model, that came a little bit um, after this. What year is this? It's an 89. And as Mr. Bill from the Fuel Power Channel says, who we'll be seeing at some point soon, I'm sure, this could be you, this could be yours. Uh, contact Alex, uh, 07950 pounds. It looks about right to me for something like this. And then we've got his far older cousin here. We've got a... Uh, Left hand drive 63 Beetle. Bit of a sort of rat look going on here, I think. Not that I know much about these, to be honest with you, so I just know that uh, that's a fairly original looking car. Well, no, it's not, is it really? Just joking. More Volkswagens here. Mark II Polo. 
Which is sort of the same age as the one my, my, my father had, actually. I don't think this is even a Polo C. I think this is just a base model, which means it will have, well, not very much of anything at all. It's probably an 86, judging by uh, the, the steering wheel that doesn't actually feature the Volkswagen logo. It's just got this sort of Wolfsburg castle on it. So you will have a look at that from this side. It might be a bit easy for you to see. Could be one. I could have switched it out for an older one, I suppose. But I remember that steering wheel from all the Mark II Polos that were around um, when I was younger. My childminder had one, my uncle had one, my father had one, uh, my godmother had one. Yeah, they're very well known to me. And uh, these ones here that are right hand drive, the pre facelift ones, do not have a brake servo. And the brakes are terrifying, and the steering is really heavy in them for some reason. Triumph 1500. 1972 to 73. TC model was, was actually um, rear wheel drive. This being a 1500 is actually before that. This is front wheel drive. It's evolution really of a 1300. And uh, then again, um, it's all much was similar to this. It's really, really similar to 1500 TC because they were all rear wheel drive Dolomites and the Toledos. There you go. There's a famous Triumph Slant 4 engine, 1.5 litre. I do like those. I had a lot of my 500 SC many, many years ago myself. Oh yes, lots and lots and lots and lots of V36s today, I'm sure, viewers. Including this uh, 1999 V28i. Very, very late for a new 36 I must say. I think this was the last shape of the V36 they made. Something else that's uh, rather tasty is this Alfa Romeo 156. It's a GTA model. I think they call this a sport wagon, the, uh, the estate version. I love the styling of it, it is absolutely beautiful. I can't remember if this is actually sort of post 2000 or not, I think it might be. Um, I think this is one of the facelifted ones, but it doesn't matter, is it? That's beautiful. Ooh, a Rover 100 circa 1960. I've just driven one of these views in this colour. A lot of the Rover 100s seem to be. Um, black. This one's got a grey interior. Now, I know for absolutely certain that you'll be saying, is this the one that belongs to Alex Malice's assets? No, it's not. Uh, this one has a grey interior, hers has a red interior. Well, I have driven that one and it was um, mildly terrifying. Ooh, a Triumph TR. Is this a TR3? Yes, it is. Uh, be about what, 58, something like that. Very nice condition. 1951 GMC pickup from Tulsa in Oklahoma. Can't say I know much about this sort of stuff, viewers, but uh, it's nice to see it here anyway. Oh my gosh, a Talbot Samba Cabriolet. Oh, viewers. Little suitcase engine going on there. Um, Oh, hey, 83, 84. We'll have a look at that in more detail a little bit later. A Bedford? What kind of Bedford is this? I don't doubt it. It's right hand drive for a start. Um, someone's fitted a much newer gearbox to it, I think. So uh, underneath there is some much modern shenanigans going on. Yeah, I don't, don't know what year that is at all, actually. The sort of plate suggests after 1990, but is it? Someone's going to have to actually tell me in the comment section below. Ooh, a Daihatsu Sherrod. And it's the GTTI. Oh, viewers. I think this is a three-cylinder turbo. This will be a very early one of this shape. I forget exactly uh, what this is. I think this, I think this is the G100, but there was a G101, G102, etc. The one I drove was uh, quite a late one of those. I think it's 93. And it wasn't the turbo version. I haven't seen one of these in a really long time. And as you can see, the biggest problem with these is the rust. Like it always was with the old, the old Shirards. But that is um, amazing. Yeah, it's probably about 86, 87. And we've got a whole load of classic BMWs here. 2002, 71, sorry, about 71, maybe a 70 on J. That's had a five-speed gearbox put in, hasn't it? And this, I think, is a, is a BMW 2000 CS from memory. 
I think this has had um, the headlamps changed in it. I think the earlier ones had uh, sort of a big single headlamp. This is a very stylish car, isn't it? That's very nice. I don't know what that's worth. It's probably not worth quite as much as the three just CSL, but it's still quite a lot. Um, 68, 69 registration. BMW M2. No, it didn't exist at the time. Uh, this will be probably another 2002. I think those wheels are maybe off an E21 3 Series. I don't know if that's a TII or something. I'm not really good at that sort of thing, dude. Another one of these here. They did make a whole range of models from the, I think the first one to come out was 1502 maybe, uh, in the 60s. But the 2002 is the desirable one. That must be quite a late one actually. Uh, German plates, I think this is a sort of facelift one from those rear lights. That's very nice, isn't it? The earlier, the earlier start with these lights. 71, 72, 2002, I love this colour. Alpina wheels. And it's a right hand drive one as well. That's very nice. This one's nice as well actually. This is <laughs> this is probably um, the wheels I'm not sure quite quite right somehow. Uh, some of you might like them. The wheels on the uh, orange one were better in my opinion, but that colour is lovely. Again, 70, 71. Ooh, wow, that's very 70s, isn't it? Look at this colour. Now, that's a 140 J. Is this a violet or something like that? Obviously, someone's got a the appropriate number plate, but it says 160 J. So I am mildly confused. Is this a big violet equivalent, or is it sunny? Uh, who knows? I don't know. Um, not my particularly strong area, that sort of thing, but that is very nice. More BMW action. And again, that is lovely. It's maybe a, a, a US spec one of these. Um, maybe that narrows it down even more with a Canadian flag on the back. Oh, and it is a 2002 TII with the Kugel Fischer fuel injection. Excellent. 72, 73 registration. And a 944. I wonder how many of these we'll see over the next couple of days. It's relatively early one. They came out, I think, around 1982. Um, 84, 85 registration. It's a similar colour to the 924 that um, I drove actually very late last year up in Scotland. But that is um, a much more sort of aggressive looking car. Oh, now viewers, now this is very much the sort of thing that we like. 1989, because that was the absolute last year for these, it's an Alpha Sud Sprint. I think by this stage they might have just been marketed as the Sprint rather than the Alpha Sud Sprint, because the Alpha Sud died in 1983. So Rosso Corsa st uh, style colour and a cream leather interior, not quite a beige one. I think this will be a 1.7 in here. That is really nice. Yeah, it's a Sprint Cloverleaf. Excellent. Vauxhall Chevette HSR, I believe we have here. Could just be a normal HS, but my money's on an HSR. One of the reasons I know this is because by the time of its registration, which would have been about 1983, 1984, the Chevette had had a facelift. And as you can see, this still has the pre-facelift uh, lamps on it. And all HSRs were pre-facelift, even though registered later. HSR is like an option pack. You could have had a body kit, you could have a more powerful engine, you could have other things. The vast majority of them were painted in this colour with these uh, side stripes. So I've actually driven one of these. I drove one in April 2022 on the channel. RHS. Oh, it's a fake one, is it? Yeah, yeah, oh gosh, what's going on here? That's a lo is that a Lotus Carlton steering wheel? No, uh, this isn't, this, this isn't um, a real one at all, is it? It's, it's, uh, <laughs> it's one that's been made to look like one. We've got things like the sort of indicator lens, but it's off something else entirely. 
So that looks a bit like an HSR, but that's been sort of created. It's interesting, isn't it? They've even gone to the bother of actually putting the pre facelift in, um, headlamps in it. 1966 Ford Mustang. GT350, I presume, replica, because if it was a real one, it would be maybe not actually even here. I bet that's fast, though. Our viewers, we, uh, <laughs> we found the first delight of the day. X300 Jaguar XJR in dark green, complete with a beige leather interior and wood. I do like a nice beige leather interior. That is, um, well, very, very agreeable indeed. Also agreeable is this Toyota Century. Now, this will be around the year 2000. Personal plate, of course, on this. Someone's changed uh, the wheels. Never officially sold over here. It's very much the sort of thing that you would see in Japan. If you were the company executive of some huge industrial corporation, you'd have a Century which you'd be driven around in. Not really the driver's car, but yeah, Toyota's only ever V12 was fitted to these. 1989 to 1990, 205 1.9 GTI. I think this is Miami blue from memory. So just before they slightly facelifted it, um, which was about 1990. Now this is a BMW 1600 Touring. Uh, this has French plates on it. It's not a 2002. They did actually make uh, lesser models. There we go, 1600 Touring. That's very nice, probably driven all the way from France as well. Superb. Now viewers, uh, please let me know if this is an original Mark 1 Lotus Cortina, because I, I don't know, it could be. Someone's put a baby seat in the uh, driver's seat there. I hope it's not a baby who's gonna be driving that home because it's quite a valuable car if that's a real Lotus Cortina from 1966. Ooh, Caterham 7. In the kind of... In the kind of sort of um, prisoner style. Although that would have had, a, I think, an entirely yellow bonnet. I don't know from memory. Definitely a yellow in here. What the earth is that? That's some kind of fastback midget, isn't it? Wow. There's all kinds of stuff here today. I don't know what year this is. Personal play means um, I don't really know. I, I'm trying to remember in a prisoner whether that had an entirely yellow bond is striped like this, so I, I can't remember. Another Mustang here. 1965. But very different looking from what it would have been when it was made. It's kind of like a sort of subtle sort of sleeper look to this, isn't it? I bet that's got lots of power under the bonnet. Rather like this uh, Copa replica. Oh, definitely a replica. It's on a 1991-92 plate. Don't know what this, this kit is. It's one of these uh, kind of Le Mans racer type ones, isn't it? And then we have this ski nose Passat. Oh yes, I've seen this before. I think so. <laughs> Very, very, very rare these you know, pass-ups in this country. Really rare. This is a GL. I hope it's just got a normal petrol engine in it, viewers. So 89.90 that one. When was the last time we saw a Stino's you know, Passat? Also an, an early Sierra here. pre face of state. That's had most of the interior taken out of it. I wonder what's under the bonnet. We'll have a look at that in a second. Yeah, I don't... Auto Perfection Sierra, okay, well, Auto uh, Perfection just over there, so it's a sort of show car. I'd like to say it's at least a GL. Let's just look very carefully at this. It's had a Pinto engine in there. Could well be. Pintos have, have, have the easiest to change cam belts, like known to man, pretty much. They are ridiculously easy to do. do. In fact, we're looking at it right now. Another re 36 BMW 3 Series Coupe. See, there's tons of them here today. Uh, this one's a 97 98. 
with those mirrors, it suggests it's an M3, but it, they could just have put the mirrors on, couldn't they? I mean, you know. Uh, track Transit's got a forbidden fuel engine. Ooh, very, very nice. Supercharger. Yeah, it's a Toyota Crown, isn't it, viewers? I forget the actual um, designation for this, but a Toyota Crown Royal Saloon. Looks about 1990, but I could be wrong. That plate's not going to help me, is it? Because it's a Northern Irish plate. Mark 1 Golf GTR. Actually, you know, be careful, it might not be a GTR, it could be another one. This was a GTR, very late one for a Mark 1. Yeah, it is. HT 3 registration. Oh, Citroën GSA. Direct from France. Excellent. That's a sort of way that they used to look when I used to go on holiday in France in the 90s. This is how it sort of look at, you know, kind of some imperfections of the paint and things, but pretty sad. 1967, Ford Anglia Super. This will have the uh, more powerful engine, won't it? This will have a 1200, unless it's had some of the swap in it, which it might have done by now. A lot of these have been swapped for things like uh, Geotech, ZTEC SE engines, things like that. But that might have the original 1200 in it. It's very nice anyway. It says 1200 on the back. Lake Capri here, 1986. Capri's finished production December 86, so it's pretty it's safe to say this is an 86 on a D. RS wheels. Type 9 gearbox, probably a 2.8 injection, but I don't entirely know. It looks a little bit more basic than that. So look at these, these photographs have really shown anything. Oh no, it's just a laser, it's not a, it's not a, it's not a 2.8 at all, it's just a laser. Ooh, an RS 1600R. Yeah, the earlier, sort of a much rarer cousin of them. Um, Things like the RS Turbo. That's got an 84 plate on it. That'd be worth a lot, won't it? You know, just in the time that I'll be filming, it's probably increased in value. MGB, so I suppose we'll see lots more of these. Originally would have had a rubber bumper, but it's had the bumper delete, which I actually quite like on an MGB. I like the bumper delete. Particularly on a GT like this, it looks it looks good. Grill's been changed, of course, and things like that, but that is good. The uh, Standard wheels, another Mark 1 Golf GTI, and quite a late one too, on an A registration, be in 1983 or 84 if it was the last year for them. What how many more of these we'll see in this colour? Probably quite a lot. Mark 1 Fiesta, now this looks like a gear, but it of course opens this way. Yeah, that's not that's not the original Valencia engine, is it? That's had a probably ZTEC SE in there. Good, a bit more performance. Yeah, it's a one. Well, it was it was a 1.3 gear. And it's the same colour of the year as my uncle's old Mark One Fiesta. It was also this colour. It wasn't a 1.3 gear. The one he had, it was a 1.1 L. Same area as well. It was actually from Birmingham originally, like this car. Yeah, 7879. And here we go. That is the um, 5 series. I imagine we'll see uh, quite a few of these today as well. 1993, 1994 registration. Hello to you at Forty underscore being on Instagram. Thirty-six compact, which is uh, had a bit of a repaint. Ninety-eight, ninety-nine registration. They ran a lot later than most of the E thirty-sixes. I think the last ones were the um, coupe and the compact. Ooh, a Porsche nine two eight. 
Very nice years. 1990, 1991 registration. Probably an auto, most of them were. Yep, yeah, an auto. Track action's going on behind me. We won't probably be filming that views because uh, if I try to do that, I will never get to that and going around at the same time. Another E36 BMW Coupe, 97, 98. Oh, and here's the Talbot Samba Cabrio. Those are around um, 205 GTI wheels on it, which actually look very good, actually, on that. These are very, very rare cars. Any Samba is rare, particularly the Cabrio. They didn't make an awful lot of these. And uh, they just all rusted away, and people weren't interested in them. But uh, now, that looks great, doesn't it? It looks superb. 1998, 1999 BMW Z3. I wonder if this is a six cylinder or just this a normal four cylinder one. I'm going to say it's probably the normal four cylinder one, but I could be wrong. I'm going to take a look at about Samba actually. We'll just have a little look at more of the interior whilst we're here. Ah. That's great, isn't it? Oh, Honda Integra. I think they sold some of them over here, but they were really expensive and they weren't, um, you know, very popular. But now these are worth a lot of money, aren't they? Has someone left me an information sheet? Uh, no, they haven't. That's the ticket. <laughs> yeah, so mid late 90s, I think these are. Oh, it's a Type R as well. Well, that'll be valuable, won't it? On sale about the same time was this Honda logo. These were only sold in this country for something like a year. It was like 2000 to 2001. Um, this has Mugen power badges and things on it. The only engine that was available in our market was a 1.3, I think about 75 horsepower. Amber from uh, Amber from um, Drive Seven has one of these. I'll ask her, but actually about it more when we uh, go to her um, event, which will be next weekend. Ooh, and now this is something that I actually prefer to a 205, it's a 309. Pretty fond of these actually videos. This will be a pre-facelift one. I just like them because they, you get a bit more space in these, and this early one will have a really, really high boot sill, which is kind of annoying. You, you could get either a five door or a three door, 309 GTI, this is uh, 87, 88, that sort of time. Another Capri, Capri Cosworth. Yeah, you could drop a Cosworth engine in one of these if you wanted to. Shouldn't be too difficult. This is another late Mark III uh, with a five speed gearbox. It's probably the, uh, is it the MTX? Um, no, it won't be the MTX, the MT75, won't it? That, that pattern. Ooh, is this is a Toyota Chaser. Yeah. Midnight Club, Garage D. I've seen the initial D, I've not seen Midnight Club. I have a rear wiper as well, amazing. 97, 98 registration. Another E34 5 Series here. This is a pre face one, I think. Yeah, it's not got the airbag, it's got the old mirrors. My mother had one of these. A um, friend of hers bought it brand new in 1995. Uh, the E34 Touring was still on sale at the time. My mother's one was only a, a 520 ISC with lots of equipment, including parking sensors and a lovely sort of cream interior. This one's a bit earlier, about 1992-93. Most of the NB MX-5s, gosh, it's taken a while, but we're we're here and we're going to see a lot more of these, aren't we? So this one, personal plates, I don't know exactly what year this is. UK supplied car, judging by that um, aperture. Very, very nice colour. And uh, it's got a little biscuit interior and biscuit green, not quite a beige one. Right, we've just got a little bit of time in, in this first part as we end, to look at some minis. 82, 83, goodness knows what specification this was originally, not that it particularly matters because this has been extensively modified. And this one, 
576 this one. I think they uh, changed to um, Mark Four Mini about this time, which has different rear lights. But as you can see, they just switched the rear lights anyway. So who knows? Maybe somebody else will tell me. And we'll finish off with this little minivan with a very, very last made, being 82 only on a way. And they carried, as you can see, right away to the end, the exposed hinges, the house style door handle with no locks, and. Uh, sliding windows but I think that'll do for part one of the slightly shambolic shuffle around the 2023 Retro Rides Weekender thank you ever so much indeed once again for watching please don't forget to subscribe to the channel like us really leave a comment below and uh, we shall see you again soon for more incorrect information